Welcome back to my insane operation of reviewing every single idol on it Aura Kingdom for nothing more than the joy of finally getting to share with you why you should get Tear. Of course, if you watched the short I released last week to tide you over while I was too sick to complete this video, you'll know that really all you need is Tear. But that is a biased opinion, and now that I have completed the full review of all the non-tier options in Lightning, I will be unlisting that video with the link below, just in case you feel like you need to understand the depth of my love for tier. So, for today, we have 20 released Lightning Eidolons to touch on, and one unreleased special mention at the end. The Lightning Element is a pretty top-tier element in general, with top-tier classes like Star Caller and Holy Sword, but also Grenadier, Bard, Guardian, and Guitar, in Lutz too, if you're feeling spicy about playing that as Lightning. You can see my Lightning Guitar Awakening video right up here, if you feel so inclined. A general wisdom for Holy Sword is that it is easier to build a more consistent DPS output on Lightning, but Holy has higher peak burst. Uh, but this isn't really a class review video, this is all about those Eidolons. So, here's the legend for the icons one more time, and as usual, my spreadsheet of research will be updated with all the Lightning Eidolons. I'll note that by special request in the comments last time, I've added a notable tokens column. In the future, I'll go back over those other already released sheets to add those details to them as well, but for now, we're rolling on ahead with Lightning. Seraph. Seraph is the Lightning Starter Eidolon. Unfortunately, he's a defense support Eidolon, so it's hard to recommend him to be used by any class, to be honest. You might find it to be very comfortable in early game, but once you get to end game, you're not going to find a lot of use for a defensive support Eidolon. Gigas. I talked a little bit about Gigas in my first video about Eidolons 101, because he's one of the Eidolons that you are going to get tons of keys for. Every time you make a character, you will get a Gigas key. That makes him very easy to 4-star, and he's weirdly popular in the community. Uh, but if you wanted to use him specifically for DPS support, you're going to need to give him Star Stones, and I just don't think that it's worth giving Star Stones to Gigas, because he doesn't really bring all that much else to the table. Belchandra. She doesn't have any specific lightning effects for you, but she is actually really easy to farm because she spawns in so many different places, including your guild hall. Uh, and unlike Gigas, she's actually got some buffs for you, which is uh, the crit rate and crit damage. Uh, but definitely a very early, okay damage support option, and not worth building up as a main DPS Eidolon. Kelkulan. I don't know how his name is supposed to be pronounced, but that's how I've been saying it for the past nine years, so we're gonna go with it. I personally actually still use Kalkulan even nowadays as a move speed support for when I'm swapping to lower level move speed gear and running between bosses. In that way, his current stars are perfect, and you don't need any star stones. He does get a lightning damage received debuff, but it's hard to recommend using him as a DPS Eidolon because his kit is just better suited towards using as a move speed buff. I will, however, note that his token is the 10% all stats down debuff, which is one of the best ones that you can get. But I think his best use is still the move speed swap guy. Tagarius Caesar. Now, this is going to sound odd coming after admitting that Kalkulan is my move speed guy, but Tagarius Caesar is probably one of the better move speed buff idolons for anyone of any class. He's got a move speed buff in his uh, skills. And you can use this combo skill to run really fast in dungeons, and uh, depending on your class, you might actually get an extra buff for your party inside the uh, the combo skill to run fast. So, in that way, in the past, I've used Tagarius to buff the rest of my party to run even faster when I wasn't adding enough DPS to make it worth being able to use my own skills anyway. Uh, the only downside is that you actually would need to reshuffle his stars to be able to use him as a full move speed support, so... If you want to have a fast runny guy, the Tagarius is another really great option. Just a little bit more investment required than Kalkulan. Kaiser Zeta. This guy is a little bit of a mixed bag because at his base form, you're going to end up with a mostly support type stuff. But then his star upgrades go ahead and add in the received crit damage plus and the received lightning damage plus. 
And um, I'll note that I checked against the Taiwanese database and it, it does say it's actually lightning, even though the, act the translation is holy flash. Uh, big positive is that in the combo skill, you can don his armor and the animation is super cool, but I don't think he's really worth fully upgrading and shuffling the stars just to get a DPS idol on out of him. Kusanagi. To be honest, Kusanagi is a pretty okay early game option. She's got a lot going for her in that her stars aren't terrible right off the bat, and her upgrades on skills are received crit damage and received lightning damage. Uh, unfortunately, she does actually require the, um, the mana star stones to actually get lightning support out of her, but she's a lot easier to farm than the other free-to-play options, so it it's she's not a terrible choice she's just not terrible and that's really where we're at for free to play in the lightning right now um her her token has an eight percent defense debuff as well so that adds a little bit more to her because it's very easy to get kusanagi's token tier now what do i even have to say about tier that hasn't already been said in the short video that i released last week I mean, I'm not going to make you go watch another video to actually get it, so here. He's got a lot of really great debuffs going on, it's just that he doesn't have anything specific for lightning. He has a 5% all stats down token, and he's my boy. What else do you need? Hermes. Hermes is starting to get into the Eidolons that are harder to farm in-game, because she's only in the Vault of Eternity party mode. Unfortunately, I think the best thing you can say about her is that she's got quite good archives. It's just that anything lightning specific is hidden behind her starstone upgrades and if that's the level we're looking at then you may as well be looking at Kusanagi who's a lot easier to farm. She's also got an 8% damage debuff on her token but that's not actually adding to your damage that's reducing the enemy's damage so it's hard to recommend her these for active use but she really does have pretty darn good archives so I wouldn't sit on her fragments if you got them. Santa tier. Now again, I've said everything that needs to be said about Santa Tear, but allow me the option to revel in it one more time. He's perfect. He's got lightning damage plus and damage plus, and he's got great debuffs, and he actually on his star stones gets the percent death reduction and lightning received debuff, giving him the full kit. Um, unfortunately, the most negative thing I can say about him is that he's hard to farm, but it is worth it. He's my boy. He's the top tier free to play option. And 100% the only reason anyone runs Vault of Eternity. It's not that everybody wants LP, it's that everybody wants Santa Tear. And that is 100% fact, and I am not lying, and I am not biased. Seiryu. Seiryu is our first paid Eidolon on the list, and unfortunately, after talking about Santa Tear, I just don't think she really lives up. Uh, lightning skill damage taken debuff isn't locked behind stars or uh, the Men of Star Stones, but um, it's, a, it's a really short effect and has quite a long cooldown, so it's not going to be up for a ton of time. Uh, the one thing I will mention, however, is that when it comes to the newer paid Eidolons, they've been really stingy about giving us non-humanoid type. So Seiryu having a uh, giant uh, tail is uh, a little bit unique in that way, and I do wish that they were a bit more adventurous about the different Eidolon body types. Ares. Now, I'll admit I actually googled the correct pronunciation of his name because I've been calling him Ares for a long time, but anyway, as the uh, god of war, he's um, a bit lacking. Unfortunately, he's just really not bringing a lot to the table and his lightning st effects are actually locked behind star stones as well. Um, it's even hard to recommend him as a husbando because if you closely watch his combo attack, he's actually trying to beat you down and you're just dodging him while he incidentally hits the enemies. And you know, I don't stand. Skuld. Skuld is a relatively pretty lady with a uh, move speed on her skill and really good stars to start, but it's hard to recommend her as your lightning Eidolon because the lightning skill buff in her starstone upgrades is actually only for her. Uh, but as one of the Norns, she's actually got very good archives. Unfortunately, just not great for use on field as your main DPS Eidolon. Bastet. 
actually think Bastet isn't too terrible a choice. The uh, lifesteal is always very comfortable and she's got a 20% defense debuff. Just remember that your uh, cap defense debuff by percentage is relatively easy to hit depending on your class. You may not be getting the most out of that. Uh, her received lightning damage is hidden behind star stones. But in general, she's got some pretty great debuffs and the lifesteal is always great for a clutch heal. And uh, she, her token has the uh, lightning damage received debuff on it too that kind of rounds out her kit, but just remembering it's pretty hard to get your hands on the tokens for these rarer Eidolons. Salome. Personally, I think Salome is kind of just like a step up from Bastet here because she's also got the lifesteal, uh, but she's got received lightning damage on her main skill without any upgrades and, uh, I mean, a dots or whatever. Uh, then her skill upgrades add a damage received and increases her lightning damage received debuff. Um, uh, the good thing is that you really only need to upgrade one of her skills to be able to get the most out of her. Uh, but some of the other lightning Eidolons that we're going to talk about have two skills that both add damage to your uh, to your kit. So it, she's a good choice, just not top tier. Uh, I will also note that her token has a defense debuff in it, which is pretty nice. Um, and she's, I think, the only Yandere representation that we get in the entire game as far as Eidolons go, so if that's your thing, man, I mean, Salome is your option. Rachel. On top of having the easiest name to say in this entire list, probably, she is the top tier paid option in general for Lightning. Uh, you will need to reshuffle her stars, but she's got good buffs and the Lightning Damage received debuff. And for her star stones, I think you could probably get away with only upgrading her uh, damage received debuff, which is um, one of the best choices that you can get on an Eidolon. Uh, the only thing I'd want to mention is that her pen debuff is on the skill that has the uh, damage taken down buff for you. So in order to get the uh, the pen debuff, you would need to upgrade her second skill, which is in general just not like the most effective use of mana star stones. Uh, the other thing is that she's got the 10% all stats down token. so. You can see why she's got a lot going for her here to be said to be the top paid option and top paid waifu in this list. Santa Raphael. Now, if you watched the previous video that I did on Flame, you would remember when I talked about Abe no Seime being a very special case where for specifically a class that uses two elements, you'll get a lot out of him. Uh, Santa Raphael is that, but for Lightning and Holy. And to add to that, his token adds an 8% received Lightning Damage debuff, so if you're playing uh, one of the classes that uses both of those elements, you could get a lot out of Santa Raphael without needing to shuffle anything. Uh, that would be likely just Star Collar, Holy Sword, and Guitar if you're playing them split over Holy and Lightning elements. Uh, but not all of those classes want to be split over those elements, so just just keep that in mind that it's a really interesting niche option that they've made available here. Kobainu. Kobainu is um probably your next best option if you don't have Rachel. Um in some ways you might find him to be a little bit more friendly because he's got all of his uh lightning debuffs and buffs on his skills by default without needing to use mana star stones, uh, but you can still use them to increase the received lightning damage debuff. Uh, however, Rachel has that received damage just in general debuff that's a lot nicer. Uh, he also doesn't have a notable token, so if, you wanna, if you're balancing Koma Inu and Rachel, Rachel is still coming out ahead, but Koma Inu is a solid second place and the top option if what you're looking for is um, uh, cute kiddo. We, we don't have a husbando option available in uh, in Lightning, and that's that's kind of sad, because Noda Ares. Frigga! Now, as far as Frigga goes, her kit is a little bit split between cleanse and move speed support, which means that if you want to use her as a DPS Eidolon, you'll be upgrading all of her mana star stones. Unfortunately, I'm not sure how to feel about her because one of the more interesting things about her kit is that her skill has the ability to move mobs to her. But I'm not sure how valuable that is. It's hard to say having not 
used an Eidolon with that effect, as it seems to be something they've only decided to start implementing recently, but I just don't think that that unique... Uh, normally you would want to keep all your mobs grouped up together and have them in an AoE if you're using a class that has AoE damage, but moving one out of that, it doesn't seem to be super valuable. Um, the other thing is that she does have the 10% all stats down debuff token, so... She's got that going for her, but I don't think that she's your top choice for a DPS Eidolon. Santa Koma Inu. Now, as much as I think Koma Inu is adorable, I have to say that sadly I think that Santa Koma Inu is just kind of an upgraded Kelkuan. He's got move speed stars and some interesting effects with that, uh, moves target to caster, but, uh... Honestly, it's 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 really hard to say that that's very valuable right now. Um, and the other thing, of course, is that we missed Koma Inu this year because of the the transfer. They they weren't releasing new idolons during the uh, period right before the transfer, so we kind of missed Santa Koma Inu. And I'm pretty confident that nobody has him. Uh, so just know that you're not exactly missing out in terms of the uh, the idolon himself. He's uh, not a DPS. So, there you have it. To summarize, Rachel is reigning supreme for the lightning element right now, with Koma Inu being a pretty good second choice. Santa Tear is in-game farmable with Vo and is the best choice for free-to-play, though you will probably take a while to farm him up unless you can get into multiple Vos per day. I swear this is not bias. Kusanagi is an okay option that is a lot easier to farm, but her lightning-specific support is locked behind star stones, and it's hard to recommend upgrading her skills since she is very outclassed. And personally, even now, I use Kalkulan as a move speed buff, especially when using low-level move speed gear to run between bosses and dungeons. Special mentions are Tyr, who is very special thank you because he is easy to farm and has excellent debuffs, though he isn't specific to lightning, so absolutely use him on every single class, and Santa Raphael as a very nice lightning and holy Eidolon that you might find to be very effective specifically for a star caller, holy sword, or guitar if you split over lightning and holy element. Now, for that future sneak peek, we are not too far away from a new lightning Eidolon, so here's a checkup on his stats from the Taiwan database. And that Eidolon is Aladdin. He's got crit damage and lightning skill stars, as well as both a lightning skill damage buff and a lightning damage received debuff that are not locked behind starstone upgrades. Unfortunately, his starstone upgrades also don't really seem to add anything that adds any extra damage either, but what that does do is make him a super cool husbando looking guy with low needed investment and everything you need for lightning right there, although he is a little bit lacking in the debuff category. I just want to add that, as you can tell, I'm very partial to tier. So the truth is, even with a nice Rachel at my back, I'm gonna use Santa Tear. Don't let anyone make you feel bad for using an Eidolon that isn't absolute top tier meta. If you like Salome, you'll probably find that her lifesteal is really comfortable when playing. There's something to like about all the Eidolons, and in a party you don't want to all be using the same one anyway. Husbando over meta, fun over meta. And with that, we are done for today. I'm sorry for the two week break, it was supposed to be one, and then I was sick for an entire week. I wasn't even playing the new Xenoblade Chronicles 3 DLC, I swear I was actually bedridden sick, not slacking. By request in the comments last time, up uh, next week we will have Holy. Make sure to let me know what element you want after Holy below, and thank you for watching yet another Eidolon Masterclass.